Hey, what's up everybody? So in this video, I'm just going to kind of walk through this new project that uh, Unreal Engine team has put out. A couple of their developers uh, used Unreal Engine 5 to create this uh, simple example game called Stackobot, where you are a robot um, or multiple robots and you can go around and interact with various things and walk through the world. And it's a good example of um, doing the world partitioning um, and loading in individual level pieces as blueprints. Um, it's got a lot of interesting stuff, so let's check it out. You know, first off, this is a little um, pretty simple game where they've got some basic assets, they've got some interactions, um, a little place where you can generate these robots, um, some different things that'll happen, sliding doors, moving panels, um, some little things to collect, uh, and then this pretty nice little background that they've got going on here, some movement uh, in these trees. So anyway, let's just jump right into some things I think is pretty cool about this. Um, so first off, the when you first started up, it's uh, focused on this. Uh, you know, this map uses the world partition, um, and this is uh, a new thing in Unreal Engine Five. And they just have uh, four partitions um, created here. You could make as many as you wanted to out of this, I imagine. And the idea behind this is that each one of these is an individual level that is dynamically loaded uh, as you enter th the area. And I believe that you can set um, you know, the distance, how far away from the area until it starts to load or whatever else. Um, you know, you can, for the, for the game purposes, I'll just go ahead and let's see, I'll just select all of these. Um, you see I can load these cells, I can unload all of them, I can move the camera to a specific uh, part. Like, let's see if I do this. Um, oh, it's not loaded, so let's load this. And maybe. Let's load that. You know what, let's just, let's load them all. Hmm. Weird. Oh, oh, I see what's happened. It's moved me to a point that I'm behind a, a rock. Okay, so it it did work. It just moved me to a point in the map that that uh, wasn't visible. Um, so at any rate, with all of this loaded, you can see they've built out some uh, some pretty neat things here. Each one of these buildings is a separate um, level blueprint. I'll get into that here in a second. Actually, I think I've got it right here in the bottom. Um, each one of these main areas is a different structure, and so what they've got here is they've put these pieces together uh, as a blueprint. Let's see, let's move this over. They've built this out of individual pieces, individual static meshes, and they've just kind of combined it all into one easy to um, to place and manipulate um, piece of code or piece of uh, asset here. So um, they build all of this stuff in, and this you know you can do to different things in the event graph if you wanted to here. You could have blinking lights or you could have whatever else that you wanted to. And it's all contained within this one file. And then if you have multiple um, developers that are working on one level, uh, they each can have their own copy of this uh, packed instance level here. And that way they can uh, you know, make their changes, uh, you know, uh, uh, commit them to source control and not uh, you know, risk overriding or running into issues with other uh, developers' work. Um, it used to be uh, in versions before this that you had to basically check out the entire level and if you made any changes to it you had to then save, you know, push the level back up to your source control system, have another developer pull that down, you know, and then make whatever changes. And so this at least breaks it into, you know, four distinct sections that a developer could work on uh, and then, you know, individually load in or, you know, commit back to the source control so that the other developers could could pull the, that new work down and uh, update it in their own uh, project. So way easier of a workflow when you have multiple developers working on a single level. So let's see, uh, another thing that was interesting that I saw in the, um, the overview made by the guys uh, that created this is, if you notice, these trees back in the back, uh, they aren't moving. They're just uh, like static meshes. But then this tree has a little bit of wind motion to it. And this is actually two different materials that they're changing based upon the LOD on how, how close you are to it on the level of detail. And so when you're close to it, it will um, show you one material. And when you're further away, I'll show you another one. So I just got the got to the distance there where this one is going to start. 
and you can see it start to build in dynamically load some some pieces here and this is interesting too I haven't quite seen how they do this yet how they put this boundary up around the edge I imagine it's probably fairly simple to do since I think that's probably built into the engine the way that they fit all of this and everything in under one gigabyte is pretty interesting and that it works with um, you know a PC or Mac uh, I'm not sure if it's set up for mobile or not probably not but um, but at least you know you have some sample code that is at least cross-platform so let's see let's just uh, jump right in and let's play this game for a second uh, that was a pretty neat little thing that little loading um, uh, thing that happens whenever you start the level let's do that again that little thing was neat and I saw where they did that was let's see it was on the HUD I believe so let's go into the blueprints framework and let's look for the in-game HUD here. Yeah, this is where they were doing this. So on begin play, they have a sequence. And the first thing they're doing is they're loading that little widget. And um, then they're just you know doing this set fade to fade to zero. Uh, this is another interesting thing where they are dynamically changing the camera based upon uh, where, you, where it is in relation to the character. Like I'll show an example of that. Like as you get... Um, it, it's just handling, you know, this these uh, um, going in, going through objects or whatever else, or whenever you go into, uh, whenever you jump or double jump, and it goes into this um, jetpack mode, it zooms back a little bit, just to kind of give you a little more um, space on that. It's kind of jumping around. I am trying to play this game and also record and stream all at the same time, so not really sure how well this is going to go. Um, has these little checkpoints like this and so as you hit this it uh, is saving your game and it also makes that the next print um, uh, station so see if I hit F here to print a robot it's gonna print a new one right there so this is another cool new feature of Unreal Engine 5 that they use in this example and this is uh, input mapping so normally you would go to your project settings and you would go to your uh, input section here and you would create all of your mappings uh, right here this is how you would normally do this uh, then you relate to these mappings you know in your player controller or in your um, uh, your player blueprint whichever way uh, this works now with this new uh, input mapping scheme and so um, we have this new file that defines all of those same things that you would normally put in the input section. So you have your um, your action here that you want, and you have each of your keys here uh, that you might want to uh, to use for that. And you can add as many of these as you like, just like uh, the other way. Uh, this gives you a little more flexibility in that it breaks it out of your project settings. Uh, each one of those correlates to one of these input actions so you create one of these for each one of your uh, input actions that you want to support um, and you know this is like this one has a you know a 1d axis uh, this one the jump you know is just a, a boolean on or off so uh, there's probably good more flexible things that you can do with this in the future this is just kind of what I know about it right now and it was really neat to see them use it in this project I'm excited to learn more about this feature so this project is one of the first ones I've seen that has used the meta sounds. Um, this is uh, very intriguing to me uh, as a musician uh, and into uh, sound synthesis, uh, waveforms and whatnot. Uh, that's kind of what you're doing here on these meta sounds. So uh, all of the music for this uh, example game is created dynamically uh, using um, waveforms and LFOs right here within meta sounds. And the really interesting thing to me is that you can have an input uh, to, the, to the meta sound, and in this case it's the BPM, and so you can speed up or slow down the music. So if you have a more exciting scene and you want to speed the music up uh, to kind of add to the tension, you can do that. If you have a more relaxing uh, section and you want to slow the music down to kind of convey that, uh, you can easily just set the input of a BPM, and uh, that's a pretty pretty interesting way to do it so that you don't have to have multiple audio files that you are loading in uh, to memory and, uh, you know, con and switching over to. Uh, this all looks fairly complicated. I haven't gotten into this very much yet, but it looks like we have a bunch of, uh, you know, triggers uh, that are or waveforms that are being triggered uh, by different things, different BPMs. Let's see, we've got an LFO here, so this is doing some modulation on it. 
Uh, looks like we're kind of grabbing some random notes and we're doing a MIDI note quantizer so that we're basically sticking them into a scale um, so that they uh, you know sound like like you mean for them to sound and not just random notes um, yeah so we're going on through this here's a couple of saw waveforms that they're adding in um, so it looks like they're probably doing some processing uh, of the actual MIDI note before it actually gets to the waveform generator. This is all really, uh, really cool. I'll probably will be doing another video just on Metasounds uh, in the near future, kind of digging into what some of these new things do and how to add this into your game. So thanks for watching. Um, make sure that you uh, download this demo and check it out. Um, it's got a lot of uh, great stuff in it uh, for Unreal Engine 5, things that I haven't seen tutorials on just yet, and it gives me a lot of ideas for new tutorials to make uh, and uh, new examples that I can create with some of this stuff. So, uh, you know, I'll leave links in the description of where to get it. It's in the Unreal Marketplace, and I'll leave a link to uh, the uh, example um, video that was created by the developers of this. They go into some of these things uh, in, in more detail than what I've gone into here. Uh, and uh, anyway, it's interesting to watch. So thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe if you like this type of stuff.